Adventure. Adventure, intrigue, mystery, romance, starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Together in the sultry setting of tropical Havana and the mysterious islands of the Caribbean. Bold Venture. Once again, the magic names of Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall bring you Bold Venture and a tale of mystery and intrigue. Slate, wake up. Come on, wake up. Uh, go away. I'm in the middle of a dream. Tell you'll meet her around the corner at half past eight. Come on, on your feet, mate. Sack time's over. Look, sailor. Never walk into a man's office while he's in the middle of his siesta. Get up. You've got a visitor in the lobby. Have him sign the register, give him his key, carry his bag to his room, then maybe he'll tip you. Why, sailor? It's a lady. Hmm? Young? Pretty? Beautiful? I didn't ask her. That's good. Now I can find out for myself. Hey, get me out of this mosquito netting, sailor. Why should I? You look better with a veil. Come on, the girl's practically in a swoon now. I want to watch what happens to her when she finally meets you. Yeah, me too. In a swoon, huh? Right in the lobby, huh? Mrs. Reed, this is Slate Shannon. Hardly worth waiting for, was it? Mrs.? Oh, pardon me. I've got some unfinished business at a siesta. No, no, please, Mr. Shannon. Stay. I can make it worth your while. I'm rich. That's why I'll pay you $1,000 to find my husband. Oh, please, Mr. Shannon. Find him for me. Talk to him. Convince him to come back. Look, honey, why do you need him? Guy will run away from his wife and leave her nothing but a mink rug. What good's a guy like that? It should have happened to me. No, you don't understand. Tommy's sensitive, deep. And... Well, he got involved in a murder here in Havana. Yeah, that's, that's pretty sensitive. He was absolved of it. Tommy couldn't kill. No, my husband's a wanderer. He doesn't like to be tied down. When did you see your husband last, Mrs. Reed? Four months ago. He came here to Havana to think things over. I send him money every week. That's the way I like to hear a girl talk. But I stopped doing that. I thought if I sent him no more money that he'd come back to me. He hasn't. He got more lost instead. Oh, please, Mr. Shannon. You know Havana. You can find him. Any amount, anything you want. Where'd you send the money? Care of general delivery here in Havana. Uh-huh. I'll, uh, grab a fistful, put it in a big fat manila envelope, get a green one, something I can recognize, and send it like you always did. You're going to find a husband for her, huh, Slate? Yeah. A girl like Mrs. Reed... How do I look with a hole in my head, sailor? Better slate. Makes you look real breezy. Can't you hold your head like that, Bailey, when I'm sketching? Oh, that's it, just like that. Ah. You've got an interesting face. Hey, Ross. What? You still think about it? I do. I never thought I'd grow up to kill a man. I remember in high school, I, I couldn't make up my mind what I wanted to be. A drifter who killed. Forget it. When Tommy Reed, that rich name's husband, stumbled into my joint in Havana, all we were going to do was roll him. That's why you slipped a gun in my hands, huh? You're not so dumb, Bailey. I figured you'd figure that. For instance, switching identity with Tommy before the cops came. Then telling them the dead man was Ross Moore, me. He tried to hold up the joint, and look what happened, copper. Because I read the papers. Yeah. Because right near Little Orphan Annie was an item about how a guy named Tommy Reed had run away from a rich wife. Uh, how come no more money from home? Tommy's wife ain't cutting you off, is she? Maybe I'll type her another letter. 
Sign Tommy's name again. Because you're a big artist with the hands. Do it, kid. I don't like it here in San Vicente. I don't like this cafe I'm running. Well, get money, kid. Or I'll look over your shoulder before you turn your back on me. <laughs> Give me another dime, Slade. What for? I've been playing the stamp machine. Haven't lost yet. Come on, the dime, while I'm still ahead. <laughs> you know, that's what I like about you, sailor, the way you run amok in a post office. What else is there for a girl to do in a post office? That's a question. All right. I got a special delivery for Slade Shannon. So kiss me. You just stand there and hold the pucker, sailor. A skinny little man just walked away from the general delivery window with a fat green manila envelope in his skinny little fist. You got a heavy load, Chico. Uh, the way you say it through your thin mouth, senor, it scares me. I'm a scared easy man. Ask anybody. You catch on quick, Chico. The envelope, hand it over. You're a plain close postman, senor? Give it to me. Because I do not want to make a scene. I am also a do not want to make a scene, man. Take it. He's heavy for me anyway. You're doing great, Chico. Now tell me, how come you pick up an envelope addressed to Tommy Reed? Because Tommy Reed pays me to do such things for him. I'm on his payroll, senor. You going to stop all that loveliness by jacking me high? I'm in the mood to run your errands for you. That's all, Chico. Your mood will carry you maybe 70 miles, senor, to the Cafe Estrella in San Vicente. Have a nice trip. Thanks. That's where I find Tommy Reed? Oh, see, you love it in San Vicente, senor. People go around with thin mouths all day, like you. It's very scary. Thank you. For what? For not beating me to a pulp to rob me. Hate that pulpy feeling. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> uh, I don't believe it. Sailor. Right in back of you, Shannon. I watched the whole thing. Thrilling, wasn't it? Come on, sailor. The mail goes through tonight. How do you like Sam Vincenti, sailor? Mm, these outdoor pet shops send me. Hey, look, there's another one. Come on. Oh, isn't that a beautiful parrot? Look at the way he's looking at you, Slate. He hates you. Hey, hey, get him off me, sailor. Here, Polly, here. Cut it out, bird. That's it. Ah, oh, Slate, I want to buy him. I'll tell the proprietor to stuff him. I'll pay for it. I'm going up the street, sailor, to the Estrella Cafe. Polly wanted. Hi, mate. What's your pleasure? Tommy Reed. Is he around? Tommy Reed, huh? Gee, there's a name I haven't heard since. <laughs> In fact, I never heard of it. In case somebody introduces me to Tommy someday, uh, who shall I say ask? Slate Shannon. Gee, mine's Bailey. You say Tommy Reed, senor? Now, oh, take a walk for yourself, Loopy, before I... Before what, senor? Nothing? One of these days, you're going to get too close with that knife, baby. Yeah. Let me pull it out of the table for you, Loopy. Here. Gracias. One day I kill this man in the throat. <laughs> yeah, that's an opening conversation, if ever I heard one. Let's sit down. Ah, what about Tommy Reed, Loopy? Don't talk to him. Away. Get away from here before I do the thing of the knife. <laughs> I am clever with men. No, Senor Slate Shannon? A regular genius. Now, why you want this, Tommy? I don't want him. His wife wants him. He will not go back to her. Where is he? Try on Avenue Robles, numero 64. All right. Adios, Loopy. Slate. Hey, Slate. Oh, I see you found yourself a bird, too. You always were a handy man with a salt shaker. Did you buy the parrot? Uh-uh. He nipped. She come for same man, too? Uh-huh. <laughs> Sailor came along for the ride. She cannot have him. She cannot... Watch her, Slate. She's got a knife. She always does. Come on, put it down, Loopy. Put it down. I will grip her. I will show you... Just drop the knife. Ah. Oh. Just take it easy. Sailor doesn't want anything from you. Take her out of here. Go. Yeah. Before I... 
Yeah, I know. The throat. Well, let's go see a man about a wife, sailor. You came through all this... Bailey? Loopy? I almost didn't make it with Loopy. Uh, classic, isn't she? You came to my rooms through all this just to ask me to go back to my adoring wife, Janice of the safety deposit boxes? You going back to a Tommy? The light's good in San Vincente. I've never done better sketches in my life. That Loopy's quite a sketch, too. Have you ever done one called Loopy without knife? I have. Either way, it's more exciting than Janice and the Jodper set. I've been sitting here studying you, Shannon. It's good here in San Vincente. Why don't you stick around? Don't tempt me, kid. You said the right thing, Slate. I could take up this knife dodge, too, if you ever try to walk away from me. No dice, huh, Tommy? No dice. Just tell Janice to keep the money coming. It'll keep a warm spot glowing in my heart for her. You just went and spoiled it, Tommy. Come on, Slate. Let's go break a woman's heart. Sometimes you're real good at that. Miss Reed! Hey, Mrs. Reed! Well, they told me at your hotel you were out here on the beach. Well, did you find Tommy? Yeah, I found him. Is he all right? Sure, he's fine. We had a nice talk together. What did he say? Well, he said he didn't want to... Hey, wait a minute. Hmm? Look, up there. What? what? There's a man up there. He's waving to us. Oh, I wonder why. Do you know him? Well, he's too far away. I can't make him out. Hello! What did Tommy tell you? Did he say... Watch out. He's got a rifle. Duck. Oh! You all right? <sighs> Mrs. Reed. Now, you'll never know that Tommy won't come home. Our stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, and the second act of our story. Mr. Shannon, he journeyed to San Vicente in behalf of Lady Young and Pretty to find a man who is losing foot. Cannot find a place to root. He said to Mr. Shannon, go tell my wife. Without you, dearie, is very fine life. Mr. Shannon, he go to tell the word. But she shot from gun before she heard. Maybe she happier so, Mr. Slate. A woman who must love a man who drifts is a woman who must search the dark places for her heart. Cut it out, King. She's dead. Leave her alone. What's the matter with you, Slate? The man just made a comment, that's all. Uh, that's just what I need. Comments. Has anyone here got a good comment on who killed her? Calm down. Forget it, will you? Forget it, will you, she says. What's happened to all the bright answers, sailor? Don't you think it's important that a woman was shot down? Sure, I think it's important. But to whom, Slate? Your part of it's over. No, I guess it isn't. I ought to know better than to try to keep you out of this. You just won't quit, will you? You won't quit, Miss Sailor. Mr. Slade will... Shannon speaking. Inspector LaSalle on the reverse side, senor. Now, what do you police want now? First, I ask you politely to appear to me at headquarters. Then, having heard you refuse, I warn you I will send six policemen after you. Each of same having large muscles. Adios, Senor Shannon. You look 
thoughtful, Senorita Duval. Whenever a girl gets shot for wanting her man back, it makes me stop and think. And you, Senor Shannon, the wrinkles are pensive on your brow. Por qué? Translation, come how? Whenever I get arrested, it brings out the pensive in me, occupational disease. On the table is the question of what you know of the murdered Mrs. Janice Reed. Well, let's see. She was pretty. She was lovely. She came to... Because you wanted her husband back, remember? Yeah. Husband who was involved in a murder here in Havana. I have been poring over the file of the murder. The man Thomas Reed was vindicated. You mind if I pour over your shoulder, LaSalle? What for, Slate? What do you want with the file? My file is your file, senor. A saying we have in the police. Because there is a growing shortage of rope to wear about the neck. You read a police file on an old murder and we find ourselves back in San Vicente. Why, Slate? You want to stuff another parrot? Well, we found out a lot of things in that file. All we have to do now is prove them. Why not just give it to LaSalle? Things like this keep him in tacos and tortillas. A woman gets killed walking at my side. It makes an empty feeling. I want to get rid of it. Any objections? That's what I live for. For you to get rid of an empty feeling. (laughs) Well, well. Look who is here. The Goodwill Tourists. What's the matter, kids? You looking for another husband? You never have that trouble, do you, girl? Where's Bailey? He sleeps upstairs in his room. Spinning a swizzle stick <laughs> makes him too tired. Look, we fix something for you, Slate Shannon. Just Tommy Reed. Give me a fix on him. You come to insult me. You come to tell me he gone from me many hours. You tell me a thing I know. Slip the knife back into your garter, honey, and I'll tell you where he's gone. You, you know where Slate Shannon? Tell me. I go to him. I slice him. No, no, I, I don't know, but I know where I'd go. I'd go back to Havana to claim my wife's body, weep a fat tear, get her fat insurance money so I could live good. Get rid of Loopy. Hey, maybe that's what he did. You lie. You... The, the knife looks better where you had it, Loopy. Uh, believe me. Come on, sailor, let's disturb a man's rest. <laughs> You understand what you have to do, sailor. Just go into Bailey's room. Get him to admit it. How do I do that? <laughs> a girl with your talent, sailor. Your eyes, your lips, the dashing way you wear a fellow's dungarees. You can't think of something? I'm scared, Slate. You think you'll notice my trembling legs? Yeah, that's what I'm counting on. Go on in, sailor. If you need me, just whisper. I'll hear it. Uh-uh. Don't knock. Just walk in like you were a dream come to roost. Oh, I could lay an egg. Why, Mr. Bailey, fancy meeting you here. I'll take it easy, Shannon. She'll be all right. It's the only way. How else could you... Huh? A loopy. I have thought about what you say to me, Slate Shannon. About the man you call Tommy. Come with me. I give you proof of this thing you must prove. I'll do it my own way, if you don't mind, Loopy. I do not mind. But this knife at your stomach, she mind. Ah, sailor's going to miss me. (laughs) Knives. A man just has to grow fond of you, doesn't he, Loopy? I mix you something, honey? If I said yes, you'd have to get up and walk away from me, Bailey. Oh, poor you. You're lying through your teeth, aren't you, hon? A lie with syrup on top. Let me taste. Yeah, come here, let me taste. Why, Jack, how you do carry on. Oh. Just relax. I want to talk to you. Talk? You flipped, honey. Listen to me. You don't have a big secret anymore. Slate Shannon knows all about you. About what happened in that cafe in Havana a while back. He knows the real Tommy Reed's been dead since then. What else does he know? He's seen your buddy's sketch. He's figured your buddy's been forging letters to Mrs. Reed. So now? Shannon checked the police files, and he's figured there's only one way this thing makes sense. Ross fooled the cops and Tommy's wife by switching identification at the time of the murder. So now? 
Tommy Reed's been dead all the while. And now Mrs. Reed's dead. You've got a good aim, Bailey. I've got aces and spades, then. I got you. I can shoot my mouth off all night. Nothing happens to me because where I go, you go. Sure, I killed it. You know why? Slate! Slate, he admitted it. He... Slate, where are you? Expecting Shannon, huh? Oh, look at me, all at Twitter. Come back in, Mr. Val. You'll die in the doorway. In here, Slate Shannon. Open the door. Well, maybe the folks at home are practicing a rumba. Shouldn't we knock? Whose place is it? Mine. Open. Inside. Andale. I've heard that when a host holds a knife in his guest's back, it just isn't hospitable. The knife is to sharpen your hearing. Oh, you're going to tell me something. Toto. All. Everything. You're going to save yourself the trouble, Loopy. I know Toto all everything. That Tommy Reed isn't Tommy Reed, that his name is Ross, all of it. Now you can take that knife out of my back. No, I cannot. I do not know whether to stick you or no. I have not made up the mind. Let him alone, Lupin. Ross! Oh, Ross, mi alma. Where have you been? Where have you been? I hired a boat. I went fishing. Sea trout, Shannon, this big. You should have been there. Fun. Yeah, it would have been at that. I like you, Ross, but you killed a man four months ago. What's that between two guys like us? Let me kill him. <laughs> you got yourself quite a kid here, Ross. Yeah, protects me like anything. Man gets so he looks forward to that. A man gets a lot of ways. You, for instance. I can understand how you might have killed another man, but Mrs. Reed, why her? I didn't like that part of it either. My Ross hurts no woman. Bailey, Pig Bailey, he shot the senora. I envy you, Ross. You've got friends all around you. Even a guy who kills for you so you can inherit a fortune. Bailey likes to do things for me. And Loopy, too. Let me do with Ross. Let me kill Shut him. Shut up. It's between Slate and me. You got yourself into a thing here, Slate. It poses a problem. If you walk out of here... Having a party, kids? Am I invited? I'm invited. What'd you do with Sailor? I tied her to an ironing board, and I tied the ironing board to a door. She'll keep. What do you want, Bailey? Why the gun? How come everybody in Cuba suddenly knows what happened to my cafe in Havana four months ago? They're talking about what you did to that woman on the beach, too, which washes us up, Bailey. <laughs> Outside. <laughs> washes what up? You're not brushing me. You're going to get all that money and half of it's mine. More if I want. Keep away from Ross. Keep away from him. <laughs> Peek! I told you! Oh, oh, oh. You! You! Peek! The knife teaches you! No hands on Ross! You! This gun! Look! Oh. Ross! Ross! Hold me. Hold me. I... I do not want to... She's dead, Slate. I'll carry you, Lupe. And put you down. Here. Sleep well, Lupe. I don't think she'll like knowing she died the same time as Bailey. Never say that many words after the dead, Shannon. Well? Well what? It's you or me. One of us have got to walk out of here. Yeah. You or me. You're good, Slate. Could be better. Goodbye, Ross. Yeah. Goodbye. You fight a good fight, but killing softens you up. It's all over. (laughs) 
Sailor. What do you want? Stand there a minute. What for? Well, just stand there, that's all. Like this? <laughs> that's right. Don't laugh, Slate. Three hours on an ironing board will do that to you. This is the first time I've ever seen you with a crease in your jeans. Golly, you're a funny fellow. Come here. You come here. It hurts when I walk. All right. You like that? Poor, defenseless girl. And well, next time, tell him to pour starch on you, sailor. You wrinkle too easy. And so our two stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, have brought to a close our latest Bold Venture story. Special music was composed and conducted by David Rose. May we invite you to listen again next week at this time for another exciting adventure starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall together in Bold Venture. 